Okay, so as I was saying in the last video, um, we're in this new situation where we're looking at the um, sample means on a distribution, which means I'm no longer looking at this other picture where this is the distribution of IQs. I'm now looking at this new picture which is the distribution of sample means. But I know that this distribution has the same mean as the distribution of IQs. So this will still be 100 here. But the standard deviation is not going to be um, 15 anymore. It's going to be 15 over the square root of the sample sizes that I'm using to make this distribution, which in this case was 10. Um, and then the question is just asking um, about this distribution instead. Um, so first, let me estimate this is about 4.743, I'll round a little bit. So what that means is that this distribution, it's a lot thinner than the other one because um, from the middle to the standard deviation is only about five away, whereas before it was like 15 away up there. Okay. Um, so, so that's one thing to notice is that it's much thinner. This distribution is much thinner of sample means. Um, but now we do the same thing as we're as we're used to do used to doing. So, what does this mean to do? So now the question is, we want to know what's the probability of getting a sample that has mean above 110. So what that means is I'm just looking for the area above 110, but on this new distribution. Because I'm not asking about what's the probability that a, a single person has an IQ above 110. That would be using this. Instead, I'm asking about what's the probability that a sample mean has average or is a, over 110. And so that means I need to look at the distribution of sample means and see that, well, 110 now, it's pretty far as opposed to before. And I'm looking for this area over here. Um, but that process is the same as what we're used to doing. It's just on a new distribution. So, so how do I do this? Well, first I get the z-score for 110 on this distribution. So the mean is the same, it's still 100. It's the same as the population mean, but the standard deviation is now this number instead of 15. So if you put this in a calculator, you'll get like 2.11. Um, so that's the z-score that I'm looking at here for 110. So then I use an online tool to get, you could do it a couple different ways, but you can go straight to area to the right if you look at the right tool, or you can do the area to the left and then subtract from one. But in the end, you'll end up with um, 0 0.0175. So now to answer this in context, just like before, we just have to adjust a little bit. So this question was asking about the probability that a sample mean was above 110, not of just one person being above 110. So we have to say our answer in that context. Okay, so the probability of obtaining a sample mean um, with mean IQ more than 110 or greater than 110 is this 
answer that we just got, this area to the right. 0 0.0175. Okay. Um, so in general, the idea is you just get this distribution from the original distribution, and then you answer the same, same types of questions as before on this new distribution. And later on, we'll introduce more fancy language, but first let's get used to this process. So um, here is another example. So let's see, mean weight gain during pregnancy is 30 pounds with a standard deviation of 12.9 pounds. Okay, so let's say that a doctor gets a random sample. A doctor gets a random sample of say 35 people. So the sample size is gonna be 35 and determines the sample, the mean of this sample, the sample mean weight, oops, mean weight to be 36.2 pounds. So if you're just taking one person all sorts of things could happen. But the idea is that if you take a random sample, it's sort of hard for strange things to happen because the new distribution you get is gonna be much thinner. So it's less likely to be far away. So for example, back here, this distribution is way thinner than the original distribution. The original doesn't even have to be normal in the first place, but in this case it is. Um, so the point is like getting a single person that has a IQ over 110, it's a pretty good chance of that happening. That's a pretty big area. But getting a sample of 10 people, having that average IQ be a bigger than 110, much smaller, much harder to do. So then if a doctor takes a big, a big sample of people and gets a mean weight that seems kind of far from the from the 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 population mean they might think that that's kind of weird because it's not just one person that's so far away but a whole group whose average is far away um, so then they might ask something like this does this seem unusual very vague question but we'll try to answer it just by thinking about what, 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 what does it mean to be unusual? It just means to be very far away from the mean. So we're really seeing if this sample mean is very far away from the, the population mean, which is the middle of all the sample means. Okay, so here's, here's how we work through it. Okay, so since we know that the population mean is 30 and the standard deviation is 12.9, then we can make this sample distribution. So the sample means form, I'm sort of saying it just a different way from last time, but it's the same idea, form a normal distribution um, and so this is where all the sample means live that I could get. And there, the, the mean of those sample means is the same as the mean of the population. So it's gonna be 30, but I need the new standard deviation. So the mean is still gonna be 30, but the standard deviation is not just gonna be 12.9, it's gonna be 12.9 over the square root of the sample size, which was 35 put this in a calculator is 2.18. So much smaller standard deviation than you start with. So this will be like 32.18. And I don't know how to do subtraction, but 30 minus 2.18, whatever the heck that is. That's on that side. 
So this distribution is much skinnier than if the original happened to be normal would be because the standard deviation is only around two versus 12. Okay, so then the idea is that the doctor got a sample of 36.2 and it would be unusual to get something if it was too far away. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about the probability of getting such a sample or getting an even further sample. That's the idea about how to answer this question. So the doctor got a sample with mean 36.2. So for this to be unusual, means um, anything above it would also be unusual. So we'll find the probability of being above it. Probability of getting a sample mean above 36.2. That's what we're trying to find. Um, so now it's the same as before. We get the z-score of our sample mean using this distribution. So 36.2 is what we got. The mean is 30. The standard deviation is 2.18. So how far away is our sample mean from the middle? It's 2.84 standard deviations away, which seems pretty far just by looking at the z-score, but you can also get the probability to the right. If you look that up or figure it out using an online calculator, you'll get 0 0.0023. Um, so I would say that's pretty unlikely because it's a very small probability. So since, um, Point zero zero two three is a low probability. It's unlikely for a doctor to get such a sample. Or one um, with more than 36.2 mean weight gain. So where this could be used is, okay, if a doctor did get such a sample, they might think like to check if these people have some underlying condition or some, some reason that they're so far away from the middle, or if it really was just randomly picked like that. Um, okay, um, so just to summarize before we end the video, next time we're gonna introduce more jargon and do more examples, but just to summarize here, what we're doing is we answer these new types of questions So they're like this. They're always word, worded very similarly, so that's the nice thing. So given a population mean and standard deviation for that population mean, what's the probability of getting a sample um, with sample mean in some range. So it could be above a number or below a number or between two numbers. Um, but that's the idea. So then why does this work? Well, it's just some very fancy math background that this distribution will always be normal. Distribution for samples 
is automatically normally distributed. Um, so we can always use our z-score method without having to assume that it's normal like in the previous section. We're always assuming things are normally distributed just to make sure our z-score thing would work for those questions. But here, these questions can be answered without assuming that they're normal because they automatically will be. So meanwhile, sorry, a z-score method. Um, so meanwhile, the original population might not be normally distributed. which means that you can't use our fancy methods to figure out questions like we, we asked before. So we can't use our z-score method. To answer the questions like before, that was like on the quiz, which was like, what's the probability? that x is in some interval. So like what, what's the probability that x is below something or above something or between two things, stuff like that, that we asked about before, we can only do if we just pretended that things were normally distributed, that's what, then the math works. But if it's not actually normally distributed, then that stuff doesn't work. But now here, when we're asking questions about sample means, then I don't have to worry anymore because it just automatically is going to be normally distributed no matter what the original population looked like. OK, so um, the examples are not as difficult as the theory to understand. So hope you can trust me when I say that next time we're going to introduce all the fancy jargon that we skipped over right now. Um, but see you next time.